when it comes to preservation, it's a little bit harder to decide at the beginning, before opening the nose, before entering the septum, it's not easy to make decision because if yes. you don't know exactly what they did before, yeah. if, if, if it's your own revision, it's easier because you know exactly what kind of septum job you did. Yeah. If, if it's high septal strip, it's another story, it's easier. If it's low septal strip, it's another story. But if you don't know what they did before, you have to first explore the septum, you yeah. have to understand the previous technique, then you uh, have to okay. make decision on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rhinoplasty Podcast with me, Dr. Cameron McIntosh. We're coming to you guys live from Berlin at the Rhinoplasty Global Masters Conference. I am Oris and my guest today is Goxel. So nice to see you again. Great to see you, man. So it's been I'm a while since we chatted. Here. What's been happening in your life? Oh. Life is good. Yeah. Working hard, traveling hard, teaching, learning, yeah. improving. Yeah. So, you know, it's the endless story, rhinoplasty story. So we are all learning. So we never graduate. It's the, it's the life we chose. So uh, this is, so the thing is, if you are starting with rhinoplasty, how do you actually start? Because we had a session this morning and Aaron was, Cousins asked a great question about like there's so many different views on maybe piezo osteotomies at the moment. What would your advice be to someone who's kind of wanting to start yeah. rhinoplasty? For the beginners, actually, it's hard to choose how to start, whom to start, yeah. and which instrument is the best. Yeah, yeah. It's a interesting question to answer because, you know, I mean, you're in advance. I'm in advance, so we cannot ask them to start with the same Absolutely. thing. I mean, Absolutely. they have to start yeah. with the basics. So if you don't know the basic, you cannot solve your old problems because in the future you will have some complications and you have to solve your old, yeah. own complications. Yeah. If you don't know how to solve your complications, it's better not to operate. Yeah. Then I recommend them to start with the basics in rhinoplasty. So the very basic techniques, the hump removing, the using the grafts, the first structure. It's the base of rhinoplasty. So first, you, they have yeah, yeah. to learn structure. They have to yeah. use how to make the osteotomies with osteotomy. Because one day, you will struggle with your piezo or any other power instrument, and you ha you need to use yeah. your uh, manual instruments. Yeah. Then you have to know how to use them precisely. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you have good hands, and if you train enough, you can use the regular instruments like osteotomes perfectly if you have the good one. Yeah. Then it's better to start with the regular instruments. Of course, you have to improve yourself. You have to add a lot of details to your knowledge. Then you can do piezo osteotomy, you can do power instruments osteotomies, or you can use different techniques like the preservation, like low septal strip, but it's kind of advanced. Yes. So you have to start with the basic. Then by the time, once you have the correct patient, once you have the enough knowledge, experience, mm -hmm. they will start with the advanced te 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 yeah. techniques. I'm not saying that preservation is advanced to totally because there are some basic preservation steps, but not all patients are good candidates for beginners. Yes. Because once you improve your knowledge, once you have got your experience, Almost all patients are a good candidate for you for preservation. But it structure. takes years to gain that experience. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years, so I'm still junior yeah, in many ways. It takes time. So it, it what, takes time. what in your mind are the green lights for a preservation case and what are the red lights for a preservation okay, case? For beginners. Yes. I'm underlining because, a absolutely. Be, because if you ask someone who is doing always 100% preservation, all cases are a good candidate. They can make combinations. Yeah, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. So for beginners, yes, straight dorsum patients and not wide, not narrow dorsums, Yeah, it should worse to preserve. Yeah. I mean, you have to look at the nose and you don't want to destroy anything, so you want to keep it intact. So yes. they are the good candidates okay. and not kyphotic dorsums, yes. not S-shaped bony humps. Yes. Because you need to work on the surface, then you cannot manage as a yes. big beginner yes. some, some, sometimes perfectly. So okay. it's better to start with the simple cases, simple hump, not the kyphotic one. Yes. And you have to, of course, follow the rules of blocking points. You have to release all the tension. Yes. Then you can get easily the result. 
But if you start with the Kaifoti Camp S shaped torso, you have to add a lot of maneuvers. For beginners, it's not easy to remember. Yes. I remember my first surgeries, I mean, in structured rhinoplasty. I went back home nighttime before sleeping. I asked my, did I do osteotomy? Because for me at that time, yeah. I have to repeat the old yes. steps. Yes, sure. Because you don't know exactly why you're doing osteotomy. You're just repeating the steps, you know? Then in for beginners, preservation is the same. They have to repeat the steps. If you have to repeat a lot of steps, you can make a mis mistake. It's better to start with the basic one. Yeah. Now, going along the same track, doing a full open approach. In terms of what is your advice for beginners there? How much do they have to actually dissect for you to be able to see the lateral wall okay. of the nose? Actually, extended dissection doesn't have a lot of drawbacks. I mean, once you extend your dissection, the healing is getting slower. You will have more swelling. Not bruising, but swelling is yes. long lasting. And then uh, there are not a lot of drawbacks. So I recommend them to start with extended dissection. It is okay. easy to see. It's yeah. easy to manipulate. It is easy to understand the anatomy. Then they see everything. I'm not talking about open or close. I'm talking about extended dissection because extended dissection can be in close approach or open approach. We yeah. were always mixing up. Yes. We were always thinking that if you're talking about the extended approach, it means that it, you're opening the nose. No. Yeah, yeah. You can extend dissection. your dissection. It can be close approach. It can be open approach. But I highly recommend them to, for beginners, start uh, with the extended approach. Now, in my uh, level, I mean, when I I end up with the limited dissection now, yeah, I don't dissect the ligaments if it's not needed, because okay. it makes difference. So, uh, what, what's the biggest difference is healing. I mean, they heal so fast. Yeah. In one week, when I take out the cast. I see it. I see the result. It's amazing. Okay, so I want to ask you now, getting to that open approach. So above where you're going to do the ballerina maneuver by releasing the upper lateral from the nasal bones. So to be able to get low down enough on the nasal bones, you have to you have to dissect free the piriform ligament. If I'm correct, not always. Okay, but if you're dealing with the big hump patients, yeah. if you're dealing with the very kyphotic hump patients, yes. you have to release more and you have to cut the vertical preform ligament also. Yes. A longitudinal preform ligament, always we dissect. Yes. Separate from the... But uh, now, what happens if you've done both of those and the ballerina? Isn't there a little bit of instability on the lateral wall of the nose there? Actually not, because uh, it's just a lateral wall connection. Okay. And once you release the lateral wall connection till the dorsal aesthetic lines, yeah. you're not dissecting the dorsal aesthetic lines. You're yes. just dissecting the lateral wall, lateral okay. keystone. Okay. So it doesn't make any instability. Yeah. Uh, in case, of course, you don't have to use this method. You don't yes. have to use this maneuver yeah. for concave upper lateral cartilage. Okay. If you release the concave upper lateral cartilages from the bone, yes. you can create inverted V deformity easily. Yes. But concave upper lateral cartilages are very rare uh, situation. I yes. mean, yeah. normal uh, anatomy, right. we always see them straight, flat, or convex. Yeah. So concave upper lateral cartilages are very rare in the yeah. population. That, that's why it's not the big deal, actually. Okay, I've got a question around revision of... Um, some of the preservation cases. I know you do a lot of revisions, not necessarily your own revisions, but the revisions that come to you. How have you found, and what are the main issues that you found with preservation revisions? Yeah, I do a lot of revisions of structure. I do yes. a lot of revisions of preservation. So it's the main title, actually, the revision rhinoplasty. But when it comes to preservation, it's a little bit harder to decide at the beginning, before opening the nose, before entering the septum, it's not easy to make decision because if yes. you don't know exactly what they did before, yeah. if, if, if it's your own revision, it's easier because you yeah. know exactly what kind of septum job you did. Yeah. If, if it's high septal strip, it's another story. It's easier. If it's low septal strip, it's another story. But if you don't know what they did before, you have to first explore the septum. You yeah. have to understand the previous technique. Then... You have uh, okay. to make decision on the table. Mm -hmm. That's why it's different than the structure. In structured rhinoplasty, it's easier to make decision mm -hmm. at the beginning because you know exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. They removed the hump, 
make the middle water sure, construction sure. or not. So yeah. it doesn't make any big difference. Okay. But for preservation rhinoplasty, it's a little bit tricky because of the septum job. Yeah. But anyway, I highly believe that the revision of the preservation rhinoplasty is easier yeah. than structure if they follow the steps See, correctly. Listen, because if they kept the dorsum intact, yeah. I mean, there can be some irregularities, there can be some crudeness, there can be some dep 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 depressions. Then you can solve that problems yeah. with some grafting yeah. or supporting the septum. Anyway, it's easier than structure. Yeah. But of course, in some hands, they can destroy everything in structure or preservation. I'm not talking yeah. about yeah, no, no, the, sure. the marginal sur surgeons. So, uh, Goxel, one last question, because I know you've got to go and chair a session now, is I've been struck by the times when I've been in theater with you that how you can kind of get your mind into the zone where you're calm, but you happy each each stroke of your hand, the way you're moving is an absolutely fluid motion. And I just think back to when I used to paddle, the really top guys were absolutely brilliant at that. What is your secret with trying to be, with so many things on the plate, with the, all the stuff with the AFPS and traveling, et cetera, et cetera. How do you get yourself mentally in the right zone when it comes to doing an operation? Actually, operation theater is my temple. Yes. When I go to temple, I forget everything. Yeah. I just concentrate to my job and my result. Yeah. So I don't care the time. Mm -hmm. I never check the clock mm -hmm. on the wall. Mm -hmm. Time is my patient's time because for them it's the most important time because they are they are giving their yeah. self to you. They trust you yeah. and you have to get result. So I think it's the main uh, secret that uh, I concentrate nicely because mm -hmm. I travel a lot, I work hard, yeah, yeah, and I have family. I have to spend time with them. Yeah. I have a lot of things in my mind, but when when it comes to operation theater, as I told you, I I shut down the yeah. electricity. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> then I concentrate my job. Yeah. I think it's the secret. I don't know how I do that. Maybe, I mean. It's easy for me, but maybe sometimes it cannot be easy. I highly recommend you to try to think different way. Yeah. It's it's I'm I enjoy so much when I'm doing surgery. It's the most enjoyable uh, part of my job. Yes, I'm not enjoying so much when I'm consulting patients. Absolutely, yeah. The same talks, same answers, yeah. same questions. Yeah. Da, 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 so <laughs> tricky. But when yeah. I'm operating, it's like playing puzzle. Awesome. Yeah. This guy. Yes. Listen, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, we'll catch you again next week.